Uh, welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, uh, the webcast. I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Eugene Kasporsky, and we want to talk a little bit about how the industry has changed from the time he entered, uh, and what are some of the major milestones and landmarks along the way. Eugene, thank you for being here. Talk a little bit about uh, what the anti-malware world was in uh, 1989 when you first started doubling in, in, in security. Well, you're right. I'm uh, for more than 20 years in the industry, and uh, that was a very interesting time. This is the war, amazing. And there were many changes. Actually, uh, if you have a look at uh, the 20 years back, if you remember, there were no mobile phones, no right. internet. Uh, computers were like some uh, unusual and expensive toy. Right. And actually, yes, sir, their computers, they were like uh, helpers to other businesses or for home entertainment. And that time, computer viruses, they were not too serious. So they, that was like a, a little pain. Right. And uh, anti-malware industry was also like a helper. It wasn't necessary to have antivirus. Many, many users, consumers, and right. businesses, they didn't use antivirus at all. Or they used it sometimes to clean systems. But then, computers, they came to the real businesses. Uh, now Every, we everything changed when we became connected to the internet. Though. Yes, That's that was that, big, that was that was that was the first big milestone. Yes, the first big milestone, and second milestone was the fact uh, uh, the first uh, examples, the first uh, variants of uh, viruses which used internet in an active way, the right. email worms. Right, right. So there are actually the two milestones are uh, three. First, there was first virus developer. Do you know, by the way, which was the first virus? Uh, the Morris worm. No. No, before that? Before that. As far as I remember, well, the, first the, first, the first virus was uh, developed in 1981 or 82nd by American student, and uh, the virus infected Apple II computers. Ah. So that so was, a, that was a, just, just what, like a, the viruses were born. And later, their first milestone that was internet invention, uh, when viruses started to spread from computer to computer. Right. Uh, in our internet passive mode, passive. because passive mode, because they didn't use internet in an active way, um, so there was spreading by mistake of uh, users which attached the infected file, for example. And the second serious change was uh, uh, that was in 1999. Then the, there was a first virus which used internet uh, in an active way. So right. the virus infected emails by itself. And uh, later, there was uh, cybercrime on the rise, and there was also a milestone. And now, we have example of the first uh, cyber warfare, mm -hmm. the, f uh, the first uh, cyber weapon, missile, right. cyber missile, uh, which affects industrial systems. So actually, I think there were three, uh, four, shifting, four points, sh right. shifting periods right. of malware. First. Uh, virus research, when mm -hmm. students, uh, kids, they were developing viruses as a research, they tried to understand how this self-replicating right. programs how, 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 how do they work. Second step, second period, uh, there were cyber hooligans, cyber vandals, developing malware for fun, right. then cyber crime, and right. now we are in a period of uh, cyber wars, cyber warfare. We're also, we, cyber crime has kind of taken over. Uh, the world is now much more connected. You mentioned in the very beginning, everyone has a cell phone in their pocket that is now a mini computer that you're doing a lot of financially related activity, a lot of uh, personal information, a lot of information that's very valuable to cyber criminals. Uh, do you expect things to get better or do you expect things to get worse as we move forward? Uh, we're not getting to cyber warfare yet. We're just talking about just yes. cyber crime, financially yep. motivated cyber crime. Well, uh, talking to the man who is for more than 20 years in the IT security, you can't expect positive answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pessimistic about that. And uh, there are several reasons why cybercrime is, is on the rise and uh, why I expect to have more and more cyber criminals. First of all, it's quite an easy job. They need just computer, they need the internet, that's it. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that. Uh, second, they have a lot of money. Unfortunately, cyber criminals, it's a, it's a very profitable business, unfortunately. Right. And uh, at the same time, it's very low risk business because uh, cyber police forces, they're not able to catch all the cyber criminals or visible right. some uh, serious number of cyber criminals because uh, most of them, they are very professional, so they behave anonymously in the internet, so they hide themselves. It's very difficult to find them. Right. So because of that, and also there, 
there are emergent markets, right. and there are more and more and more, more internet, users. internet users from the poor countries. So I'm afraid that we'll have more and more cyber criminals. I'm expecting that the governments finally will get to cooperation and uh, will introduce something like Internet Interpol, the International Cyber Police Forces, right. which will be more, uh, which will operate in a better way and will uh, arrest more cyber right. criminals. Right, so have more law enforcement cooperations around the world, yeah. cross borders, yes. to help with uh, doing. Uh, but uh, my dream is to have this kind of Internet Interpol. But uh, when is it comes to governments, it's very slow. Do you think it will be a reality, or is it just something that you're slowly going to be arguing and fighting for over years? I think that uh, it will be reality in some 10, 15, or 20 years. Right. I want to talk about this last shift. 2010 was this other, you just mentioned, this a dramatic shift towards cyber warfare, cyber, uh, 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 cyber sabotage, uh, specifically Stuxnet, which is the, basically the first publicly known uh, uh, case of cyber espionage. Uh, do you, for, two questions. One, do you think there are more Stuxnets out there right now? One, and two, do you expect to see an increase in this type of activity? And do you expect to see uh, more defensive posture being taken around SCADA environment and some of these other, uh, you know, critical infrastructure that's, uh, now we know that they're being targeted? Uh, do we have just one Stuxnet in the networks, or are there more you have cyber missiles? More. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the smell. The smell is. I don't have facts. I right. don't have real data. But the smell is that there could be more. And I'm afraid that in the future we'll see more and more cyber uh, cyber attacks of this type, cyber sabotage, or maybe cyber terrorist attacks, mm -hmm. uh, when their industrial systems or their critical infrastructure systems are under Depending. the attack. And we depend on that. Mm -hmm. But actually, this, uh, uh, the computer systems, they're everywhere. There are elevators in there. We're in the hotel now. And uh, the elevators in this hotel, for sure, they're operated by some digital systems, some, some kinds of data, which are directly or indirectly connected to computers, the traditional right. computers, which are directly or indirectly connected to the internet. The internet right. So technically, it's possible to stop elevators here in the right. hotel. So the digital systems, they're everywhere. Even these two cameras, which are recording us, they are digital as well. There's right. a software there, there's some kind of operating system. Right, right. Good news is that these cameras, they are for sure not connected to any computer and to any, but who knows? Right. But who knows if you have to update the firmware on it, how do you get the firmware off? Yeah, yeah well, you, who knows? You connect it to a computer maybe. So if the software has a vulnerability in the camera, and if you, well, you replace the, 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 the card and right. you're connected to the computer, if some kind of special designed file is copied to this card and then injected into camera, maybe this camera will become a cyber weapon, recording something really, really wrong. Yeah. Not you and me. Yeah, but something else. Something else. A lot more malicious. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the big, uh, one of the big lessons from Stuxnet was the fact that uh, we didn't, uh, in the ICS, the control system uh, vendors, never really paid much attention to security at the very beginning, to building security into the software in the very beginning. Do you think Stuxnet will change that mindset and force, uh, force uh, SCADA environment vendors to think about security in a more proactive way, or do you think we're, Definitely. we're not yet there? Because mm -hmm. you, you talked a little bit about the history lesson, and the blaster worm forced us to turn a firewall on by default. You know, these, these big incidents force changes. Do you think Stuxnet will force that kind of change on the defensive side? Definitely, yes. And I'm expecting two major changes. First of all, I'm expecting to have more government regulation on the industrial systems, on the critical infrastructure systems, right. on uh, non-consumer software right. systems. And that's the first. And second, I think that there will be more regulation about secure operating systems, which must be used in a critical in infrastructure and industrial right. environment. So yeah. these two major changes, government regulation and secure operating systems. I want to end quickly with two major predictions for 2011. In your mind, what are we going to be talking about mostly next year as you move forward? Uh, the, first, uh, the first thing I'm uh, sure about uh, next year, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Because you know, according to prediction, the end of the world is 2012. Right, right, right. <laughs> 
by and Kalin. Yeah. And uh, second prediction is the fact that there will be more and more demand on the security software, security hardware, security solutions, okay. unfortunately. And uh, I think that uh, uh, IT security industry uh, will feel quite well, unfortunately. There will be more attacks, but at the same time, there will be more government activities and maybe government, intergovernment communication to okay. design cooperation, to design uh, the, new, the new cyber world. Uh, because uh, this computer system, the internet, it's a kind of new reality. It's a new country. It's a new land. And this land is connected. It doesn't have borders. And there are more than one billion population in this country. So I think that this country must have special regulation, special standards, control, and penalties if you don't follow the regulation. Uh, but I don't expect, uh, I don't expect that uh, next year, in 2011, but I expect that governments will start to talk more seriously about that. Thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters from Kaspersky Lab. Uh, you can see a lot more of our webcasts on our YouTube channel at youtube.com securelist. Thank you. Mm -hmm.